Fonko. In the Manding language, Fonko means the thing. In Wolof, to take care of each other. The great musical revolution of today takes place in Africa, where urban club music is merging with traditional styles. New technology and swift communications has released the super talents of the continent, spreading music, arts, and ideas to the rest of the world. In episodes, we will take you from Dakar in the west to Accra, Lagos, and Luanda, to Johannesburg in the south, to meet the most prominent and eloquent musicians on the continent. Funko. Everybody is taking the template and reconfiguring it. So when people who make music in the townships across South Africa and across the continent, they're using computers, they're using Fruity Loops, they're using Cakewalk, like all the kids around the world. But they corrupt it, they make it speak in their own language. There's a lot of stuff that's happening there that is related to design, music, fashion, and people are beginning to ask all kinds of new questions with a, a boldness that we haven't seen on the continent for a long time. You know, we haven't seen certainly since the era of the 60s liberation movements. South Africa is an exceptional case. In no other country has there been statutory racism as heavy-handed and as long-lasting as here. And 20 years after the fall of apartheid, it still shapes the country. One style of music that has inspired artists all over the world is Shangan Electro. Welcome to the world of Shangan Electro, ladies and gentlemen. Cutting edge blend of traditional rhythms and up tempo electronica, and possibly the fastest club music in the world. The main character of the scene is Nozinja. He used to work as a mobile phone repairman until he moved from his small town to Soweto, the biggest township in South Africa. Here he started making electronic dance music. You have to explain some consequences with an African culture. Somebody will say, nah, it's not been done. We don't play music like this. Who are you to come and tell us to play this? I've been playing music for 20 years and you come with your speed. Nah, something's all right. You, have, you will have some cultural, deep cultural, uh, uh, radical cultural people saying, his break is destroying our culture. But as, as the time goes, you find them dancing also with that beat. And then you ask them, which culture did we destroy? I said, no, you didn't destroy any culture. Actually, you are enhancing the culture. Now, this is Shangan Electro. Shangan Electro is drums the Shangani drums. Because if you play Shangani music, if you don't have two, 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 which is the toms, then that's not Shangani. Now, we've got drums, you've got the toms, then you've got your melody. Don't forget to have your marimba. Without marimba, you've got nothing. Then you make them match and compete with the speed and arrange them very gradually and carefully. Then you've got your Shangan Electro. What can I do, my baby? I wanna make you mine. How can I do, my baby? I wanna make you mine. Never run to my baby. I wanna make you mine. We might be there on the BPM. Because others will play 145, 150, 160. If they go deeper, they will go to 175. But I have to broke some rules here. I have to broke some rules because there's this dance every Sunday in Joburg that we go to. So when you do a song, you are anxious to wait for Sunday for me to test it if they like it or not. <laughs> So that's when things started to, 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 to shape up, we said 160. 
165, 170, 175. And then last year when I came to Europe, it was 184. If I tell you now we, are good, we have gone to 189, you won't even believe it. That's how fast we are going. And that's how fast the dance is going. I cannot put the beat of the dance if the dancers are not going to cope with it. When you land at Cape Town International Airport, the first thing that you see is the beauty of Table Mountain, but you've got to drive through squatter camps and shanty towns before you can even get close to that mountain. Just in that five kilometer drive, you see everything that is wrong with South Africa. That there's democracy and there's freedom, but there's still a sea of squalor and poverty. And to say to them you have democracy is not enough because they don't see it. And this is where the situation becomes very, very difficult. South Africa is an exceptional case. The white minority oppressed the African majority and the so-called colored population, meaning people of Indian, Asian, and mixed origin. The different ethnic groups were separated by highways and railroad tracks. Today, South Africa's infrastructure and city planning still operate within the racist framework of the past. South Africans in general are people who know how to fight for their rights because they've had to fight for their rights to the death, to long prison sentences, to detentions and isolation, they've done it. And it's almost like something that I'd say is in our blood. In a way, it's a good thing, because then it means that people are always acutely aware of injustices around them. Okay, yeah, because the Amana Banda is a shooter, man. So, and, 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 and there's, a, there's a, also a bit of a segregation going on between the, the blacks and the coloreds based on the locations that they are, they are in, you know? The only time that you would see colored people in a, in a black area is when they may be looking out for scrap, you know, because we have a lot of scrap factories and, and sell it and get it melted at a good price. And the only time that you would see black people coming to colored areas, it's maybe when they go through to work. So it's not like there's kind of like a relation, you know, there's, no, there's not that much connect, connection between the colored area areas and, and the black, black, black townships. That is the man who the world has been waiting to see in nearly three decades, walking strongly into freedom. After the fall of apartheid, South Africa's music and culture blossomed. For the first time in decades, black South African musicians were able to express themselves freely. One of the most significant outcomes was the birth of the musical genre, kwaito, which became the first cultural expression of the new South Africa. The song, Don't Call Me Kafir, marked the beginning of a Quetzal wave that lasted for 20 years. Kafir is the Afrikaans term for nigger. Quetzal emerged from the townships and was influenced by hip hop and house music. I think rather than sort of like, look, the foundation of Kwaito very much in itself was um, a, very, a township sound. You know, it was defining where we were in the townships at a particular time, 1994. And so for the first time, you really got to say what you wanted to. I mean, and I guess, you know, everything has been written to death about Don Call Me Kafir and all of those, um, the music that came out of that then. But I think there's something new and interesting happening with artists that, are, you know, I think they've been dubbed as the so-called Afrofuturists. You know, they're coming out with, yes, they're reminiscent of, of Kwaito and, you know, the sort of like electrical movement behind, the electro movement behind that. But at the same time, they, you know, there's, there's a new South Africa to that. You know, they, they're turning things on their head. They're communicating our culture as Africans, but at the same time, finding a spot for that in a globalized space. So you've got people like Spook Matambo and um, Dirty Padofino coming up as well. And I think what they're doing for us is saying, you know, we can't run away from globalization. But what we can do is say, here we are. We are Africans. 
but um, and we have a very globally relevant sound, but at the same time we're still distinctly African. I think that's really important. But at the same time, when I say I am remaining African, who am I saying that I am as an African? Am I? I'm not my mother's version of Africa. I am. I'm also not a political version of Africa because I'm not only a political creature. I'm a cultural creature, and I'm a sociological creature. And so, who am I in the digital age to define myself as an African? You know, putting an African banner on a website and a bit of patterns here and there, it doesn't make it African. You just need to say, this is my investment in Africa. This is where I want the continent to go. This is where I see us going and to commit to that. And it's going to take some convincing because you're automatically on the back foot as an African. But you get in there and you say, you know, this is who we are. I will, you know, put my cultural stamp on your website, on your Western tool, and I will use it to show you who I am from where I am. Yeah, like we were, Google Earth is in section, section one, section two, section three. We are in section three right now, you know. This side is section three. I'm living in section one, and then there's a section two, you know. Because then people, even though, even though they are from here, they feel like they are foreign to each other, you know. Not literally, but just by these sections, section one, section two, section three. If I'm from NY1 or NY what what and NY what what, it makes you feel like you're from a different area. You know what I mean? This boy, he was a pretty boy, a castle beef with cheese boy. He was from the rich home, he had all the freedom. Why you like him is dumb? The time is the idiot to put a little bit of it. It's a leg with cheese. Come a leg and jam or some banango bees. Yes. Kokoletum is one of the first townships in Cape Town. As you can see, ever since 1960s. 1960s. You know? It's yeah. people who have moved from, from the suburbs into the castle. When the Apartheid Act was issued out, if I'm gonna be rapping about money and, and chicks and stuff, I'll be lying to myself. Cause one thing that I know, black man is not happy out there. Yeah. And you, you know, know, you know. You might see from. Long Street, you might see something, but how many Tlatla squares, how many Kukulet, how many Shandy towns do we have? You know. So you might see a few South Africans rolling. You be like, ah, South Africa, new democracy. Yeah, pe blacks are running things, driving flashy cars, you know. But like if I take you now, just, just five, five minutes around the corner, or I put you in my shoes just for, for one hour, you'll take them out. <laughs> One of the main pillars of the apartheid laws was the Group Areas Act. It dictated that the different ethnic groups in the country were to live separately from one another. The laws soon became more severe, and millions of black South Africans were forced to move out to the newly built townships. Some of these, such as Soweto and Guguletu, would later develop into alternative urban centers. We've been cracking software since the 90s. You know what I mean? Like bedroom studios have, we've, we've managed to have MacBooks in the township, even though we couldn't afford them. If you bring technology to township-based population, you're doing them a favor to bring them up. And for years, yes, it's been like that, you know, computers, cell phones, and all of that. It is a privilege for the manufacturers of these, of these technologies to have the township interested in them, you understand? In that, for instance, here at Rebelstone, 
the technology that's here is being used in a way that nobody else can use. It's a privilege for whichever software company is being entertained in this lab, you know what I mean? I just want to my fingerprints. Kadu ba no me keep you mad. Kukulechu is bitter and sweet. Growing up in the townships of South Africa, you can't escape the reality, the life lessons, you know. Nothing comes easy, you gotta work hard. And because of the past and the discrimination we've experienced, you start realizing how such things affect uprising of a people. From colonization to a system of apartheid, which is institutionalized, legalized racism, to democracy and a constitutional state that is predicated on racial equality and freedom of expression. But you've got to first undo so many years of a destructive history. You've got to heal so many wounds. There's been a major reconciliation effort. And the irony of it all is all of this is happening as the economy of this country thrives and grows. And effectively, South Africa is the wealthiest country on the African continent, but still divided in so many ways. And whereas people have focused so much on the political project, the economic project, wasn't given a lot of attention, and that's become the new area of contestation and tension. You Masekela is one of three South Africa's musical founding fathers, alongside the likes of Miriam Makeba. In 1960, he was forced to go into exile but after the end of apartheid, he returned home. One of the things that people don't realize is that in South Africa, we were at war for 350 years. From 1652, when the first Dutch settlers came, there was wars, and there was also like internal wars, but there were wars against the occupiers of the country too. Since South Africa, I mean, like many countries, nothing is done without music. It's one thing that is, is not oppressible, is music. The ordinary people went into the streets and made South Africa ungovernable for apartheid. Those were the people, those are the real heroes for me. When, when South Africa became ungovernable, it wasn't good for business. You understand? It wasn't good for business because there was no profit. There were more profits to be made if Africa, if South Africans, you know, didn't make waves. So that was what was negotiated, and that was negotiated. So South Africa today, uh, the, there's no oppression. The the oppressed people are still exploited, and they still work for cheap labor, and they haven't gotten anything from this except the vote. Most people are trying to get rid of their stress by drinking a lot. We're going to pass another, this is NY6. We're going to pass here and you will see the amount of cars and fancy cars you, 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 you will see and the amount of people that are there and the amount of liquor that they are drinking. It's insane. It is literally insane. You know? Hello? Look at these fancy cars, guys. The Pan-African Space Station is a cultural center right in the heart of Cape Town. Its purpose is to create a cultural platform on the continent. Uh, the Pan-African Space Station is a, it's a music intervention, and we started it because we wanted to have a representation of the new cutting-edge music that was happening in South Africa, but also around the African continent and in diaspora. And we're interested in what it means to be a musician, a storyteller, an African in the 21st century, because we come with a lot of baggage, traditional baggage. The 
there's a definite movement right now that it doesn't sound like the movement of the 40s and the 50s, but it, the aesthetic, the kind of self-perception and the self-regard is very similar in terms of the, the, the etiquette. In, in a simplistic way, Johannesburg makes commercial music. Cape Town makes experimental hybrid music. The Cape Town hip hop sees itself as the authentic, um, radical, politicized, conscious hip hop. And so Cape Town still has this thing of, oh no, anything that comes from there is too commercial and too happy, you know, and too bling. I mean, there really is a big issue. For example, Taka Monique and Invitation to Dance, I'm singing about women empowerment. But because I have this thing about my eyes and I look all sexual, they forget the message. They, they're not, they don't know what the message is. And I'm talking about women empowerment. I'm saying that if I want to look good, it doesn't mean you must touch me. You know, I'm, I'm saying that I feel like looking like this today. It does not have anything to do with you. It doesn't mean I need to give you my number. It doesn't mean I need, you need you to call me or touch my booty when I walk around. Like, it's, I'm trying to talk about that. I'm trying to enforce that. But because in the video I look too, you know, sexual, it's like taking the message that way. <laughs> South Africa as a whole, my generation don't speak like me. They are into cars, money, drugs and alcohol. They want to get to the top fast. They don't care how they get there. They're more interested in flashy clothes and being who they're not. I support a C2. That's like how YFM is a station for young people. Uh, I mean, you guys saw some of the clips. Like, we do a very, very silly show. Uh, we're allowed to get away with pretty much everything over here, you know? Like, I say the word nigga on air and nobody calls me up about it, you know? Kind of start off as a pirate radio station, but it's legit, you know? Like, we've got a broadcast license and everything. And so, I mean, we've got massive studios now, like our own, our own building and all that stuff. So when you speak about the hip-hop scene in South Africa, it's probably not that huge. It's, in fact, I'd say it's still in its infancy stages, you know? But having said that, a lot of guys are making a living off hip-hop, which is good, you know? Um, Urban music as a whole has been existing for way longer than hip hop in SA. Like for instance, we have this genre that is pretty much South African. You couldn't find it anywhere else and it's called Kwaito. And uh, it came about pretty much after 1994, um, when the country like was liberated, you know? Uh, the young Africans or South Africans decided to make their own genre of music that purely represented what we were about uh, in the townships and everywhere else. Clear. Every Thursday evening in Johannesburg, young rappers line up outside the studio YFM to seize the opportunity to be heard on the air. Radio shows serve as a springboard to many artists set on making dreams of record deals, music videos, and playlists come true. Cause I'm raw with game, and then funny new money just before the fame. If you know you got airtime, call beef up. But the fact is, you fake like small street stuff. Yes, shoot. Damn. South African house music scene is vibrant, dude. That's probably the most lucrative scene right now. And also, like the, the beautiful thing about music is everybody can understand it. Like house seldom has lyrics, and if it does, it's like very simple chords and choruses or whatever. So you can play like a South African track in Sweden and cats will still love it, you know? Yeah, house, I'd say right now, is the most popping scene. One of SA's new generation is the young DJ duo, Black Motion. They exemplify the SA house phenomenon, blending traditional African sounds with modern house music. This is where Black Motion finalizes their project. As you can see, it, it is raw, like, this is my place, like, my backyard place, yeah. Yeah, and then I, I'd sleep here, and then I work here. Whatever we do here, we, we imagine doing on stage. Yeah. So like it's I just usually... whatever the elements we put in, <laughs> we put in standing so we yeah. know. OK, this then. I'm laying down the baseline. Yeah. 
we put all elements of Africa in one one song, which is all the forgotten elements of, of African music. Forty-one percent of the youth are unemployed in this country. If you go to the township, you see them drinking, doing whatever. So we're trying to, to say, listen, DJing is an art, production is an art, it's a business. These are the tools, this is what can make you big there. Go start your own thing and then you grow this company. A lot of gigs which are happening, they're happening in the townships. Because long back, people used to travel to Jobek to come and have this party, you know. But now, guys just put up a sound system there, then people come and drink and it's party time. South African house DJs are touring the world and sell out stadiums, and none is bigger than black coffee. We've always had thought house was big internationally because that's where we used to get house music from. Through my traveling and, and being exposed to the club scene in Europe, in, in America, you know, I've realized we have the biggest house scene in South Africa. Well, at the moment, uh, I loved what uh, Black Coffee did with Stimela, you know, which made him known. And when he asked me to do, do We Are One, I liked it because I liked the grooves and I could play on it. I feel I'm, I'm a reflection of a hard-working South African man. When I was young, I had a car accident and I lost the usage of my left arm. And I feel every day my job is to show anyone who has doubts that it's possible. Sometimes I get to gigs and on my way home and I'm driving in a very fancy car, you know, I'm thinking, wow. this fantasy of becoming a businessman. And yes, it is true, I am a businessman. <laughs> and I think I had an idea to say, when I started with the music, I knew where I was going. That I want to go international. And somebody says, that's a dream, my brother. There's nobody in Shanghai have ever gone internationally. I said, there is first thing for everyone. I am going to be the exemplary. Like I say, this area